I appreciate your arguments here. And it's funny how when we're talking about visas, we always try to minimize the impact of immigration, of what this will do to the American worker, to our population. It's always a percentage so small, it's less than 0.1%. The net economic gain from the immigration population is going to be so great. And yet no one takes into account what the net loss for the American worker will be when our focus is so far removed from the development of our workforce. The United States is a mature country. We enjoy the fruits of a diverse population and economy. Over the course of our second century, homegrown innovations in our industrial, science and technology, education, and healthcare sectors, to name just a few, have been the driving force behind what is generally regarded as the single largest and most influential economic and cultural force the world has seen. The U.S. represents but 4.5% of the world population, and yet we are responsible for over 24% of the world's GDP. The stuff we make, the services we sell. According to the World Bank, our nearest competitor is the Eurozone, comprising of 17 member states, including Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. Now, we do live in a global economy. Production, development, and innovation are no longer tethered to any one nation's boundary. In fact, the liberalization that comes with economic blurring of boundaries can oftentimes and, and often does have life-transforming effects on the citizens of the poorest nations, lifting them out of poverty. However, there is an effect to, to the globalization of the economy on the U.S. The exporting of U.S. jobs, sometimes referred to as offshoring or outsourcing, combined with the importing of competition for the few job openings available is a recipe for even tougher times for the American worker. The U.S. economy has lost more jobs during this recession than any other recession since World War II. And projections for the recovery of those lost jobs in this recession, again, the worst recession that we've seen since the 1930s, go on for another four to nine years. For many, these are dire times. And in these dire times, are we to suggest that we'll simply continue to give more and more of our jobs to people from other countries? These dark times shine a light on our need to help our fellow citizens climb the education and economic ladder towards shared prosperity. We need to address the systemic troubles in our education system that is shortchanging our future economic growth, even our economic stability. Training new entrants into specific industries and updating the skills of technicians and service workers within existing industries is the key. Looking at statistics from the U.S. Labor, um, from the U.S. Labor of Statistics, and focusing specifically on the healthcare industry, from 2008 to 2018, there's going to be a 16 percent increase in needs in workers. Physicians alone will represent a 26% increase. Physician assistants, a 41% increase. Registered nurses, a 23% increase. Counselors and social workers, at around 20% increase. These are the number of new positions that are going to be created based on our needs here in the United States. And I point to you to several innovative programs that are being developed by both private and public universities throughout the United States, from Duke to Stanford to the uh, Michigan State University to community colleges throughout the United States and North Carolina, where they are taking and implementing and expanding on the skills of our workers to help meet these needs. Our focus should not be on bringing people trained at other, from other countries and taking the positions that we ourselves can fill but taking our workers, the people who are looking, lacking jobs, and train them 
to take on these, these positions. I offer you a program that is being run by several universities in the area. And that is to take level one, two, and three EMT workers, the people who knock on our door when we are in need. Level one through three indicates whether that EMT worker can simply give us the most basic care to actually take on and do medical procedures right there as available, as necessary in your home. Taking those and being able to up train those workers to take on roles of nurse practitioners, <clears throat> to be trained to be medical assistants, registered and certified medical assistants, and even to take simple charge nurses and also upgrade those skills. Now, when you look at, these, at this one area in the healthcare industry, there are parallels to that in the healthcare and, excuse me, in the IT industry. Now, the gentleman before me spoke about how the IT field is so needing of new employees and they in fact account for 60% of all of these visas that are being requested, these employment-based visas. What if we here in the United States actually upped our game and took focus on our junior high school, high school, and college students and produced our own IT workers here within the United States? And that is what I'm proposing that we do. We take a look at who we have available, what our resources are here, we have produced the finest education system the world has seen. And instead of importing people to come in and take in the jobs, take over the jobs that we have produced through our innovation, we should be training those workers ourselves. Thank you for your time, and now I hand it back over to my